So, this video is about three weeks late. I meant to have this uploaded the day after the last video I posted, but that turned out to be impossible because my laptop was glitching very badly in such a way as to make it impossible to do anything involving sound, including recording the commentary for this video. Anyway, the problem has been fixed now and I'm ready to finish off my Equinox Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. There have been a lot of updates in this game recently, but I'm going to just ignore those for now and continue talking as if it's still late September. And then in my next Galaxy of Heroes video, I'll talk about all the updates that have happened this month. But right now I'm going to pick up where I left off in my last rankings video and talk about aggressive negotiations. When the aggressive negotiations event was first announced, we were told that it was going to be a very arduous event. The game creators couldn't have chosen their words better. It was incredibly arduous, and honestly I wasn't actually sure that I was going to complete the event. It took a bit of rearranging of mods, employing several different strategies, and many, many attempts. But I finally unlocked her. That's right, folks, I've got Padme in my roster, and she's good. I've been using her in a squad with Jedi Knight Anakin, Snips, R2-D2, and Vesus Ma. And I am able to take out squads with at least 10,000 more power points than this squad, which is very uplifting. The plan is to eventually replace Vesus Ma with General Kenobi, but I haven't unlocked him yet. And she is a good placeholder because she has a revive ability and also because she's good against Sith. And a lot of people in this game have noticed that Palpatine is a very powerful counter to Padme squads. So putting Vesas Ma in there has kind of been a counter to the counter. As well as Padme, I've also unlocked Han Solo since the last Galaxy of Heroes ranking video I did. One day I might invest a lot of resources into upgrading my rebels and crafting a powerful rebel squad but I've got my priorities in other areas right now. Since the last rankings video I did, the Darth Revan event has come around again. So I've been upgrading some of my Old Republic and Sith Empire characters. I didn't manage to unlock him this time around, but he's not super high up on my list of priorities either. Apart from unlocking Padme, and maybe even including that, probably the most significant thing that's happened to my characters since my last Galaxy of Heroes video is that I got Mother Talzin up to gear 12. And that's super exciting because with the relic update that we had just before the Equinox, that means I'm only one gear level away from unlocking my first relic. So that's very exciting. Anyway, let's get into the rankings. And we'll start with the bonus points from the end of my last Galaxy of Heroes video. We've got the Galactic Republic Jedi in the top five positions with five points each. We've got the Old Republic Jedi in the next two positions with four points each. That's a combination of the Jedi faction bonus being three points, the Galactic Republic faction bonus being two points, and the Old Republic faction bonus being one point. After that, we've got Hermit Yoda on three points, the Knight Sisters on two points each, and then the rest of the Sith and Old Republic characters from the previous top 30, all with one point each. Due to aggressive negotiations being so arduous, I had to upgrade my Separatist characters a lot. I put a Zeta on Newt Gunray. Newt fucking Gunray! I didn't even want this character when I first started playing the game, and he only became enticing to me when he got his rework a few months ago. So this will be reflected as we go through all the different stats. You'll see that the squad that I used to unlock Padme are all in the top 10 for power. So power has changed quite a lot since early August. The top four are still the same, but then Asajj Ventress has moved up into fifth spot, knocking Bastila down into sixth. And then all the other characters who were in 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th place have all been replaced by Separatist characters. You can also see if you look at the bottom of the screen that Padme is sitting in 11th spot. She won't get any points for that, but that just shows you how quickly I've been upgrading her. And hopefully in my late October video, she'll be in the power top 10. Moving on to health, this hasn't changed a whole lot from the last video. Jolie Bindo has climbed up a couple of spots, overtaking the Imperial Guard and the Snow Trooper. But then they've all been pushed down one spot by Sunfak, who is now in third position. 
So that gives you another idea of how much upgrading I've done on my Separatist characters. As we go into protection, we'll see how Mother Talzin now being at gear 12 starts to affect the final leaderboard. She has now overtaken Visus Ma into the top spot. Ewok Elder has also jumped up quite a few places. He's now in third, pushing Nihilus, the Imperial Guard, and Anakin all down one spot each, after which Padme starts to appear. Then we've got Droidicar and Sun Fak from the Separatists, and then Grand Moff Tarkin sitting there in 10th place. I've been upgrading Tarkin's gear level to try and make my ships a little bit more powerful, and I have managed to unlock a few things that have been impossible for me to unlock until this point. Moving on to speed, my top 10 for this stat is exactly the same as in my last video, except that the Geonosian soldier has climbed up two positions, pushing Sith Marauder and Qui-Gon Jinn down into 6th and 5th place respectively. Now for a quick half-time leaderboard check. As usual, Mother Talzin, Anakin, and Nihilus are making up the top three. My entire aggressive negotiation squad is also present. So far, Padme's only accumulated four points. I must admit it's not as many as I was anticipating that she would have, but we still have half of the stat rankings to go. Back in August, Mother Talzin was in sixth place in the physical damage top ten. She is now in third place, which will add eight points to her score. Again, demonstrating how much of an increase in everything a character gets when they've gone up a gear level. A lot of the Separatist characters also appearing in this top 10, and also the Imperial TIE Fighter pilot, which is different from the last rankings. I'm not sure what upgrading I've been doing to him to make him appear in the physical damage, but there you go. On to special damage, and Mother Talzin, of course, holds her top position from the last Galaxy of Heroes video. Darth Nihilus has creeped up into second place, swapping places with Grandmaster Yoda. Talia's also gone up a gear level, so she has swapped places with T3M4. Then, of course, with Darth Revan's event having recently come around, I've been upgrading Bastila Shan. I've promoted her to four stars, which is one more than she had during the last video. Not enough for participation in the Darth Revan event, but enough to get her up into 6th place for 5 special damage points to be added to her score. Interestingly, Hermit Yoda rounds out this top 10. I'm not sure why, considering he doesn't do any damage at all. So that's a little bit odd, but there he is. And as a result of Bastila and Yoda now being in this top 10, R2-D2 and Admiral Akbar have been pushed out. So back in August, there were a lot of characters who experienced potency upgrades, resulting in Mother Talzin being pushed down into 10th place for that stat. This time around, with her gear level increase, she is now up in 4th position, so she is back with a vengeance, ladies and gentlemen. The rest of the top 10 potency characters are all the same as last time, they've just shuffled around a little bit. Once again, we finish off with Tenacity, and I must admit I cheated a little bit here, I was looking at Jedi Knight Guardian stats after I made the last video and realized that I had a lot of very high tenacity mods on her, which she didn't really need or benefit from that much. So I've remodded her and that's removed her completely from the tenacity picture. You can't even see her in the other five characters that make up the top 15. Apart from that, it's all quite similar to the early August rankings. The only differences are the fact that Again, Mother Talzin's gear increase has pushed her up into the top five. And we've also got Padme there as well in ninth place, so she'll score two points for that. So that brings us to the final leaderboard. Back in August, I speculated that Padme might be in the top ten. I could hardly have made a more incorrect guess. There she is in 29th spot, just above Snowtrooper. That's her first time receiving points in these ranking videos. Just above her is Asajj Ventress, not her first time receiving points in these videos, but the first time that she's made it to the top 30. Sith Marauder sitting above her on 7 points, 1 point less than in August, but in exactly the same rank position. Magma Trooper has fallen 6 places, he's on 8 points, and then IG-100 and Zalbar both down one spot each from the August Galaxy of Heroes video. Visus Ma has fallen down four spots to 23rd place. That'll of course be due to her being overtaken by Talzin in the protection rankings. Hermit Yoda is up four spots in 22nd place, maybe due to the fact that he made the special damage top 10 for some random reason. 
maybe when he calls other characters to assist, the damage that they deal is based on his stats rather than their own. I don't know how it works. The next group of seven are almost all in a lower ranking than they were last time. Most notably the Imperial Guard who's down 12 spots in 20th place. Then we've got Darth Sion, Darth Sidious, T3, Jedi Bastila all on 11 points each, and then Sith Bastila up 13 spots on 12 points. Of course, due to all the upgrading that I did for the Darth Revan event, this is the first time that she's ranked above Jedi Bastila, which is very interesting. Moving up, we've got Qui-Gon Jinn and the Night Sister Initiate on 12 points each, Jolly Bindo on 13 points, up five positions from last time, Geonosian Soldier with the most impressive ranking jump that I've ever seen in this series of videos so far. He's up 18 places from my August rankings. Droidicar in 10th place, up 15 places from last time, so almost as impressive. Talia is up 3 positions in 9th place on 15 points. Old Duck is down to 8th place, she was in 6th place back in August, and she's lost quite a few points since then. But it looks like her decline in placings is also due to Ewok Elder now being up in 7th place on 16 points, followed by Grandmaster Yoda in 6th place on 18 points. That's about 7 points less than he had at the end of August. Then we've got Sun Fak making his debut on the leaderboards in 5th place. Now I was very impressed with T3M4 debuting at 13th place in the last Galaxy of Heroes video that I did. But for Sun Fact to debut in 5th place, wow, I've really done a whole lot of upgrading on my Separatist characters. And then our top 4 are all in exactly the same positions as they were in the last rankings video. Perhaps the most noticeable thing about this top 4 is just how much the gap between 1st and 2nd place has increased. Nihilus and Anakin both have one less point than they did in the previous rankings. Back then, Talzin was on 47 points, she is now on 64. So if Talzin were a faction all on her own, she would have made the top 5 faction points, because we can see over the other side of the screen, in 5th place, the Sith total 51 points. So that's 13 points less between all of them in these rankings than Talzin has just on her own. So they are down one position from last time, but that won't affect the amount of bonus points that the Sith are awarded at the end of October because the 4th and 5th place get both get one point each. Separatists are now in 4th place, totaling 70 points between them. This is of course their first time in the top 5 rankings by faction. The Galactic Republic on 84 points in 3rd place, exactly the same rank as last time. And then the Jedi are down in second place with 112 points, swapping ranks with the Knight Sisters who have pushed past them into first place on 137 total points. There are several characters outside of the top 30 who have contributed points to these faction totals. These include Newt, Snips, Jedi Guardian, and B1 Battle Droid. While they have contributed points to their factions overall totals, because those characters are outside of the top 30, none of them will receive any bonus points in the next Galaxy of Heroes rankings video. So this round has seen a significant decline in the prominence of Galactic Republic Jedi, and while they will still get the most bonus points for the next round of rankings, they won't get as much of a head start as they have in these first few videos. On top of that, there will be significantly fewer of them. We've only got Anakin, Grandmaster Yoda, and Qui-Gon Jinn. Asajj Ventress will also receive four bonus points at the start of the next round, three points from the Night Sister faction bonus, and one point from the Separatist faction bonus. So a very interesting top 30 this time around. Once again, my estimations at where Padme would place have been very wrong. She's in the bottom two instead of the top 10, as I speculated last time. The Night Sisters are starting to dominate, and the Jedi are starting to decline. Will they keep falling down the rankings, or will they make a comeback in my next Galaxy of Heroes video? Well, because this one was so late, we only have to wait a few weeks to find out. My guess is they will start to climb up again, because hopefully by the time I make the next round of rankings, this guy will have joined my roster. Anyway, that is all for now. If you play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, let me know in the comments who the most powerful characters in your roster are. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to share it with all of your friends. Thank you very much for watching, may the force be with you, and I look forward to nerding out with you in my next video.